the plants to get nitrogen. It gets nitrogen into the soil and also so the plant is helped with nitrogen but the bacteria itself is associated to the root so it gets protection in that association. Then also another example is the algae and fungi in lichen, what we call lichen, the association of algae and fungi living together. Also we have sea animal and lichen crabs too. They are also examples of symbiotic of organisms or symbionts. Also termites and protozoa living in the gut are also examples of symbionts. Another most, mode of nutrition is the carnivorous or insectivorous feeding. Carnivore, we said they are flesh eaters. So some plants are equipped with device for trapping, digesting, and absorbing nutritive compounds from the bodies of insects. Some insects do that. They feed on some plants feed on insects. They trap some insects, they digest and absorb food material from the body of insects. And those carnivorous plants are grown in areas with little nitrogenous salts. So they depend on these insects to supply them nitrogen. An example of such plants, we have the sundew plant called the drosera. We have the bladder wort called the utricularia. The pitcher plant also is another example of a carnivorous or insectivorous plant. Also, the venus fly, the venus fly trap, and the butterworth plant, they are all examples of carnivorous or insectivorous plants. Now, we move on to talk about the digestive enzymes. Enzymes are organic catalysts of protein origin, which speed up or slow down the rate of biochemical reactions in living cells but remain chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. They are organic catalysts. They have protein origin. They speed up or slow down the rate of reaction in living cells, but at the end of the reaction, they remain chemically unchanged. So we have two types of enzymes. We have the intracellular enzymes that are found inside the cells of the living organisms, and also we have the extra cellular enzymes that are found on the outside of the cell. So examples of intracellular organisms, we have them in the respiratory enzymes found in the mitochondria, that is the powerhouse of the cell. So the classes of enzymes, and we want to be talking about their action, what do they do? Number one, we have the hydrolysis. Hydrolysis catalyzes hydrolytic cleavage of carbon oxide carbon oxygen, carbon nitrogen, and carbon to carbon bond. So they catalyze the hydrolytic cleavage of carbon to oxygen, carbon to nitrogen, and carbon to carbon bonds. Then we have oxidoreductases. They catalyze the joining together of two molecules, accompanying hydrolysis of a higher energy bond. Also, we have the transparencies. Transparencies catalyze reaction of the general form A plus B plus C, leading to A plus C plus B. So that's the they interchange the you see that C is at the end of the reaction here, A plus B plus C, then leading to A plus C plus B. Then we have another group of or class of enzyme called the isomerases. They work on isomers and change the spatial configuration of the mole molecule in a living cells or in living cells. Then also we have ligases. They catalyze the joining of they catalyze the joining together of two molecules with accompanying hydrolysis of a high energy bond. The lyases catalyze the breaking up of bonds by elimination or addition reactions. Proteases digest proteins. Amylases, they digest carbohydrates. Lipases, they digest fats and oil or lipids. Then cellulases, digest glucose. So once we talk about 
the characteristics of enzymes. What characteristics do enzymes have? All enzymes are protein in nature. Then they are involved in reversible reaction. Their reactions can be reversible. They remain chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. Then they act specifically. Their actions are specified. Then enzymes are required in very, very small quantities. They act best over a small range of temperature. They are denatured by high temperature and at very cold temperature, they are inactive. So they work over, they work best over a very small range of temperature. Too much temperature will denature them. Then when the temperature is too low, they are inactive. Also, enzymes are pH specific. That is, they have a particular hydrogen concentration they can work with. They cannot work at too acidic ways or too basic ways. So they have their own specific pH. Then, Enzymes can be retarded, that is, their action can be stopped or destroyed by poisons or heavy metals. They function outside organism producing them. They can function outside, outside the place they are being produced. They function outside the place they are being produced. They function in another place. Then, some enzymes require the presence of non proteinous molecules called coenzymes for their activation. Some enzymes need coenzymes for their activation, then they are organic catalysts. Enzymes are organic catalysts. So we move on to the questions. I want you to try these questions and see how far you have learned. Number one, good quality food will perform the following functions in man, except A, supplying energy, B, Providing resistance against malaria. C. Stunting growth. D. Maintaining health. Number two. The following are examples of food substances, except A. Roughages. B. Water. C. Beans. D. Protein. Number three. Members of vitamin B complex are A. Water soluble. B. Fat soluble. C. Benzene soluble, D generally insoluble. Question 4. Enzymes can be inactivated by certain chemicals. Enzymes can be inactivated by certain chemical substances in the body called A catalyst, B inhibitors, C substrates, D activators. Number 5. Which of the following? Is an autotrophic mode of nutrition. A. Parasitism. B. Symbiosis. C. Chemosynthesis. D. Saprophytism. Six. Which of the following organisms is not considered as a parasitic plant? A. Cassita. B. Rhizopus. C. Doda. And D. Mistotsu. Number seven. Which of the following is a polysaccharide? A. Glucose B. Sucrose C. Maltose D. Cellulose So the answers to the question Number one is C. C. Good quality food will perform all the functions. Good quality food will supply energy. We provide resistance against malaria and every other disease. We maintain health, but good food, quality food will not give stunted growth. So the answer is C, stunting growth. Number two, the answer is also C. Examples of food substances is we have roughages, we have water, we have protein. Beans is not an example of the class of food substance. So the answer is C, beans. Number three, A. A is water soluble. Members of vitamin B complex are water soluble. You remember the other time when I was talking about water soluble vitamins. I said they yeah, are vitamin B complexes and vitamin C. So vitamin B complexes are water soluble. Then number four, 
Enzymes can be inactivated by certain chemical substances in the body called, the answer is C. Number four, the answer is B. The answer of number four is B. And they can be in inactivated by certain chemical substances called inhibitors. Inhibitors can inhibit, that is, they can stop the activities of enzymes. Catalysts will increase the rate of their action. Substrates, activators are not the ones that will inactivate it. So it's only inhibitors that will do that. Then number five, the answer to number five is C. Chemosynthesis is the mode, is the only one in that option that is autotrophic mode of nutrition. Parasitism is heterotrophic in nature, symbiosis is heterotrophic, sacrificism is also, also under heterotrophic mode of nutrition. So, chemosynthesis is the only one under autotrophic mode of, of nutrition under this option. Then, for number six, number six.